Hello and welcome. My name is Marco Mendoza and I'm the Assistant Director of Client Services here in the Office of Financial Aid. And today I'm joined by some of my colleagues here in the Office of Financial Aid, which includes Sandra Walker-Kim and Jennifer Villa, who are some of our quality service representatives here in the Office of Financial Aid. And throughout this presentation, we're going to be going over what are some of the things that you can expect now that you are a newly admitted student here at Cal State Fullerton, as well as what you can do to fund your education here at Cal State Fullerton. So again, we'll be going over the basics uh, throughout this presentation, how you can access your student portal, understanding your financial aid award package, as well as some of the commonly asked questions that we get from our newly admitted students. And we would like to start with which application you should be submitting. And there are two applications that students can submit, starting with the California DREAM Act, which we refer to as the CDA application. This is an application that had a priority deadline of March 2nd, but students can actually still submit the application and we would encourage you to do so if you haven't done so already. This is an application for those who are California residents who meet Assembly Bill, otherwise known as AB 540 uh, eligibility requirements, who have a U visa or a TPS status. Now, if you are unsure what these different requirements are, I would highly encourage you to visit the site that's linked here, csac.dream.ca.gov. Now, if you are a US citizen, an eligible non-citizen, you have a valid social security number and a valid high school diploma or a GED, I would encourage you to submit what is most commonly referred to as the FAFSA, which stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. This too had a March 2nd priority deadline, but you can still submit your application and I would encourage you to do so as well if you haven't done so on studentaid.gov. If you are a FAFSA applicant, these are the various forms of financial aid that you could potentially qualify for. Under the grants portion, we have federal grants like the Pell Grant, the Federal Work Study, and the TEACH Grant. When it comes to state grants, we have things like the Calc Grant, the State University Grant, the Middle Class Scholarship, all which can go towards paying a portion, if not the entire portion of the tuition and fees. And lastly, the Chafee Grant and the Equal Opportunity Grant, most, com most commonly referred to as the EOP Grant. When it comes to loans, we have the Federal Direct Subsidized and Unsubsidized Loan as well as the Graduate Plus, Parent Plus loan, or even the alternative loans, which are oftentimes referred to as private loans. And if you're a California DREAM Act applicant, one of our CDA applicants, you are more than welcome to apply to any private scholarships that are available through outside organizations as well as through the CSU. And know that you are also eligible to potentially receive the State University Grant, the Cal Grant Middle Class Scholarship, DREAM Loan, or even the California DREAM Act Service Incentive Grant. Now I wanna take a moment to go over some of our more frequently asked questions, starting with, can I make corrections or changes to my CDA or FAFSA after submitting it? And while the answer is yes, you can make corrections or changes to your application, we would encourage you to contact our office before you do so, uh, just to make sure it's a correction that you need to be making. Next, can I submit the CDA or FAFSA after March 2nd? And yes, you can absolutely submit both applications after March 2nd, but know that you will no longer be a priority applicant. Uh, and FAFSA applicants in particular can still be considered for federal aid. Uh, DREAM Act applicants are not considered for federal aid, just state aid. Next, where can I find my financial aid award package? And the answer is on your CSUF student portal. And finally, uh, can enrollment deposits be waived? For newly admitted students with a EFC of zero, meaning a zero dollar amount, uh, you will have it automatically deferred by the Office of Admissions. This is not something that is uh, handled or taken care of by the Office of Financial Aid. But again, if you have a zero EFC, a zero expected family contribution on your FAFSA or your DREAM Act application, it will automatically be deferred by the Office of Financial Aid, of Admissions. And now we want to take a moment to go over your student portal and uh, how you can better understand your financial aid award package. And we want to let students know that the Office of Fi uh, Financial Aid began awarding newly admitted students in March of this year. And But you must be an admitted student and have a FAFSA or CDA, a 2022 or 2023 FAFSA or CDA on file to receive a financial aid award package. If you are selected for verification by the U.S. Department of Education, you must submit those verification documents by April 29th of this year. And we'll go over where you can find those documents in just a few moments. 
Uh, but most importantly, we want you to keep an eye on your student homepage. We'll, we'll show you how to navigate to in just a bit uh, and to take a look at the tasks portion of that student homepage. Uh, you must submit any requested documents by the date that is indicated on the student homepage, which will be April 29th. But if you can submit it sooner, we absolutely recommend you to do so. All forms must be completed and submitted with any additional documentation that is requested uh, to the Office of Financial Aid in order to be for your file to be completed and ready to be reviewed by one of our staff members. And know that submitting documents late may result in reduced financial aid eligibility and initial payment of out of, fee, of, out of pocket fees may be required. And now I'll turn it over to one of my colleagues, uh, Jennifer Villa. So now we'll be discussing how to submit your documents. There are a couple of ways that you're able to submit your documents. The first one will be through a secure electronic document submission platform. You could also mail a document to the address listed or fax it to our fax number at 657-278-1595 or submit it in person during an office hours. We would also like to point out that after documents are submitted, it does take four to six weeks for it to process and it does take about a week for our records team to process it on our end and to be taken off your to-do list. And now we're going to be going over your student portal. Student, your student portal is your login at fullerton.edu under your homepage. You would click on students. And then after logging in, students can view their Titan online and access the student homepage, which you would click on the right hand where the arrows pointed. And also we would like to encourage you to please check your Cal State Fullerton email. Any communication from our financial aid office will be communicated through your Cal State Fullerton email and not your personal email. So just um, important to keep a lookout through your email just in case any documents or we communication from our office is needed, you'll be notified through your Cal State Fullerton email. Now we'll be going over tasks. On your student homepage under the task tab, it will show any documents requested of the student. You will click on more to download the form and keep track of deadline. So our priority deadline is April 29 to submit the documents. And if any documents are needed, it will be shown under your task tab. So now we'll be discussing the, your student center viewing your award package. On your student homepage, you could click on the financial aid tab to access your financial aid award package. Once you click on it, your estimated award letter will be shown and it will look something like this similar. It would differ depending on per student. And then on your estimated awards posted on the student homepage for incoming students, grants are automatically accepted on your behalf, are subject to change depending on final eligibility, disperse amounts depend on enrollment, Dropping classes may result in money and you would may have to owe back to the university if that is the case. Reviewing your award package. Reviewing your award package. Finalized financial aid award packages will be available on your student homepage. Grants will automatically be accepted on your behalf. You will receive an email asking you to view, accept, or decline your loan offers. Loans can be accepted after July 1st. Anticipated financial aid. Your accepted awards will be considered anticipated financial aid. If you're applying on taking loans, you must accept them in order to be counted as anticipated aid. Anticipated aid must be enough to cover all tuition and campus fees. If anticipated aid is not enough, the student will be enrolled to pay the difference. The student will be required to pay the difference between tuition fees and financial aid to avoid disenrollment. Now we'll be discussing how to accept your loans. You would accept your loans first on your student homepage under the financial aid, you would have clicked accept. After that, you would log on to your studentaid.gov. 
and you would have to complete an entrance loan counseling and master promissory note. It is important that you complete all steps because if you just accept your loans and you don't complete your entrance loan counseling or master promissory note, then your loans will not be able to just will be dis will not be dispersed. So just make sure to accept them and also complete the entrance loan counseling and master promissory note. Now I will go ahead and pass it to Sandra. Thank you, Jennifer. Now let's discuss how financial aid is dispersed. Our office works closely with student business services to pay accepted financial aid awards to students. These disbursements begin the week before classes start each semester. As illustrated in the equation here, all accepted financial aid is applied to tuition and campus, base, campus fees first, then housing charges if residing in on-campus housing. Any remaining financial aid after are refunded to the student. Here's the basic financial aid cycle. Step one, apply for an aid application, CDA or FAFSA. Step two, check your student portal and student homepage for any updates on financial aid. Step three, review your tasks on student homepage. This is the step we are in currently. Step four, submit requested documents. Please remember to do so by the priority document submission deadline of April 29th. Step five, students' files are reviewed and awarded and students receive their funds. Remember that financial aid must be applied for every year to remain eligible for financial aid. The 2023 to 24 academic year applications will be available October 1st, 2022. Now let's go over some more commonly asked questions. If my family's financial situation has changed, what can, what can we do? Contact the Office of Financial Aid to review your specific situation. When does financial aid pay for my tuition and campus fees? Financial aid is dispersed one week before the start of the fall and spring semesters. Do I receive all my financial aid at once? No, financial aid disperses at the start of every semester and is dependent on your enrollment at CSUF. What happens to the financial aid left over after my tuition and fees are paid? If you have more financial aid accepted than the cost of tuition and campus fees, you, and you do not live on campus, you will receive the remaining funds in, a, in the form of a check or direct deposit if you are enrolled. Can I schedule a meeting with a financial aid counselor? Yes, you can meet with a financial aid counselor via phone or Zoom, but we do encourage students to give us a call first. Who do I talk to if I have a question about tuition and campus fees? You can learn more about tuition and campus fees at Student Business Services website, sbs.fullerton.edu. Now we'll go over the ways you can contact us. You can now get your questions answered via iTuffy, the chat feature on our website on fullerton.edu slash financial aid. You can contact us via our website by using the financial aid questions feature to submit an inquiry ticket. Our office hours are Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are available in person Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. except Wednesdays, 12.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. Last walk-in is at 1.45 p.m. Our phone hours are available uh, from Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. except Wednesdays, 12.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Last call is answered at 4.30 p.m. Virtual counseling is also available. You can meet with a financial aid counselor virtually based on your, based on your availability. Please call us to schedule a counseling appointment. Our phone number is 657-278-3125. Electronic document submission is available on our website where you can submit your documents on fullerton.edu slash financial aid. And we are here to help you. 
As admitted students, preliminary financial aid awards have been packaged as estimated awards beginning in March. Responses to financial aid questions from our website will be answered within 24 to 72 hours. Again, financial aid counseling is available via Zoom, phone, or walk-in appointments based on your availability. Please give us a call to schedule an appointment. And we may be able to provide additional aid options if possible, and we may be able to update your 22 to 23 CDA or FAFSA application to reflect your current circumstances, again, if possible. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. And remember, Titans reach higher.